The Matrix has its roots in primitive arcade games, said the voiceover, in early graphics programs and military experimentation with cranial jacks. On the Sony, a two-dimensional space war faded behind a forest of mathematically generated ferns, demonstrating the spatial possibilities of logarithmic spirals. Cold blue military footage burned through, lab animals wired into test systems, helmets feeding into fire control circuits of tanks and warplanes. Cyberspace, a consensual hallucination experienced daily by billions of legitimate operators in every nation by children being taught mathematical concepts. A graphic representation of data abstracted from the banks of every computer in the human system. Unthinkable complexity, lines of light ranged in the non-space of the mind, clusters and constellations of data, like city lights receding. What's that? Molly asked as he flipped the channel selector. Kids show. A discontinuous flood of images as the selector cycled. Off, he said to the Hoseka. Neuromancer by William Gibson, 1984. It should be noted that William Gibson finished writing the novel in 1983. Welcome to a special Vintage SF as we take a look at a classic science fiction novel. Cyberpunk starts here. Although the term cyberpunk precedes this novel by a year, maybe two, Neuromancer is generally thought to be the first novel of the cyberpunk era of science fiction. Science fiction author Bruce Bethke is credited with coining the term cyberpunk. He used it as a title for a 1983 science fiction short story in Amazing Stories. He was writing the story in the spring of 1980, and he wanted to find a term to describe children who lived immersed in a truly technological society. Quote, How did I actually create the word? The way any new word comes into being, I guess, through synthesis. I took a handful of roots, cyber, techno, et al., mixed them up with a bunch of terms for socially misdirected youth, and tried out the various combinations until one just plain sounded right. The story was printed three years later in the science fiction magazine Amazing Stories. William Gibson's novel Neuromancer was released a year later. The term cyberpunk came into widespread use as the name of the science fiction subgenre. Let's talk a little bit now about William Gibson. Tom Maddox has commented that Gibson grew up in an America as disturbing and surreal as anything J.G. Ballard ever dreamed. William Ford Gibson was born March 17, 1948. While Gibson was still a young child, his father choked to death in a restaurant while on a business trip. His mother, unable to tell William the bad news, had someone else inform him of the death. Gibson, in an interview with the New York Times Magazine, says, Loss is not without its curious advantages for the artist. Major traumatic breaks are pretty common in the biographies of artists I respect. When he was 18, his mother died as well. He left school without graduating and became very isolated for a long time, traveling to California and Europe and immersing himself in the counterculture. In 1967, he elected to move to Canada in order to avoid the Vietnam War. Later, he said that this was less motivated by conscientious objection than by a desire to sleep with hippie chicks and indulge in hashish. In Toronto, he eventually met his wife, and in 1972, they moved west to Vancouver, British Columbia. His wife was a teacher, and he stayed home with their first child. He enrolled in University of British Columbia and studied literature. There he began to write, to write science fiction. We've talked about some of his stories in Burning Chrome. Two stories in particular are very important to Neuromancer. Burning Chrome set up the story of the sprawl and those who inhabited the Matrix. Johnny Mnemonic established a character who would become very important for the next novels. Her name? Molly Millions. In Neuromancer, we know her simply as Molly. I do wonder if Molly is a play on words. If you plan to read Neuromancer, it might be a good idea to find these short stories and start with them. Before I start talking about the story of Neuromancer, I want to talk about 1984. This novel is now 40 years old, and it reads like it could be a contemporary novel of today. That is something difficult to do with a novel about technology that has grown so rapidly over the last 40 years. 
in a world without the internet and cell phones. A novel is written on a typewriter, describing the virtual world of the Matrix. But this wasn't the gleaming future of science fiction. This is a science fiction that is gritty, of low life and high tech. The punk sensibilities of the 70s meets cyberspace and AI, still of our future. Gibson weaves a tale of hackers and mercenaries, of biotech-enhanced bodies, of corporations and AIs. The story starts in Japan, moves on to the United States, and eventually into space. Hacker Henry Chase has lost his ability to go into the Matrix. He betrayed a customer, and they took out his ability to connect to cyberspace. He is living in the underworld of Japan, wasting his life away with drugs. A 31-year-old mercenary named Molly, who has retractable metal claws and other enhancements, seeks out Case. She's to take him to her latest contract, Armitage. Armitage is a former military commander. He offers that he can restore his ability to jack into the web. He's recruiting Case for a special hack job. Very expensive, risky medical procedures are needed, but Case has nothing to lose. As he recovers, he's told that there is poison buried within his body, that he has a certain amount of time to do the job. He and Molly become a team, and they set off to do the bidding of an unknown client. Who is controlling Armitage? What is the purpose of this mission? Will Case and Molly be successful? Will they make it out with their lives? Along the way, they meet many colorful characters. Now, cyberpunk noir is something that we've seen in comics, films, and TV. But that's only been in the last 40 years. There is one film, though, that came out just before Neuromancer, which threatened Gibson. Blade Runner. Neuromancer was commissioned by Terry Carr for the third series of A Science Fiction Specials, which was intended to feature debut novels exclusively. Given a year to complete the work, Gibson undertook the actual writing out of blind animal terror at the obligation to write an entire novel, a feat which he felt he was four or five years away from. After viewing the first 20 minutes of the landmark cyberpunk film Blade Runner from 1982, which was released when Gibson had written a third of the novel, he figured Neuromancer was sunk, done for. He says, everyone would assume I'd copped my visual texture from this astonishingly fine-looking film. He rewrote the first two-thirds of the book 12 times, feared losing the reader's attention, and was convinced that he would be permanently shamed following its publication. Yet what resulted was a major imaginative leap forward for a first-time novelist. Neuromancer's release was not greeted with fanfare, but it hit a cultural nerve, quickly becoming an underground word-of-mouth hit. It became the first winner of science fiction's Triple Crown, both the Nebula Award and the Hugo Award as the year's best novel, and the Philip K. Dick Award as the best paperback original. Neuromancer came out when I was 21 years old. At that time, I wasn't ready to read it. Gibson was able to fuse world-building and speculative ideas with amazing poetic, sometimes fragmented sentences. The concepts in the novel would have been beyond my imagination at that time, I'm sad to say. Forty years of technology and culture have given us a lexicon, an understanding of what Gibson was writing about in 1984. I said in my last video that it seems like Gibson is a time traveler who came back with all this knowledge and wrote an amazing adventure story within this world. And maybe adventure story isn't the right term. Its protagonists are criminals working a job, trying to survive and live in their world. This novel has become a touch point in science fiction and even beyond into popular culture. It is a pinnacle in the careers of both Terry Carr and William Gibson. But Gibson had many more years and many more novels in him. Unfortunately for Terry Carr, he passed away in 1987. The most obvious visual expression of this novel is The Matrix from 1999. While the stories are very different, the culture, the technology, and some of the characters are very much Neuromancer. And what about the title itself, Neuromancer? What is it referring to? 
This is one of the mysteries of the novel. Some may still find this neon-colored technological cowboy hacker story a little hard to understand. It is constantly moving, changing, readjusting our understanding of the gritty real world and the agreed-upon hallucinogenic representation of the Matrix. Gibson has a love for his underworld characters. We never really go beyond the level of these characters within this world. They are controlled by the elite, the companies, and the AIs. This is a mind-blowing novel of world-building. Like punk rock, it rages at the confines of its society. This is still a difficult novel. It may not be for everyone, but for those who are brave and persist, there are rewards. As a reading experience, I would give it a 9 out of 10, but its historical importance cannot be overstated. I give it 10 out of 10. I'd love to hear some of your experiences with Neuromancer. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.